thank you for all coming. And I'm going to speak about the Internet of Things. And the Internet of Things are obviously things connected to the network. And it's one of the biggest growth areas in the industry. Everything, if it can be connected, and you guys probably don't know it, is connected to the internet as well. You've all got smart TVs, you're able to connect them to the internet, you're able to obviously download services and use the applications from it. And it's going to be one of the largest growth areas. At the moment, there's about 15 billion devices connected uh, to a network. And that's going to grow over the next uh, you know, five years exponentially to about 30 million. And the whole purpose of that growth is to give you the uh, capability that where you can connect something to a network, you can control it. It's about control. That's what it's about, right? So, where do you do we look at the evolution of intelligence? Right? You know, we started off in the past, PCs, manufacturing. Everyone had these big mainframes. Everyone said, no, we don't want mainframes. We want to actually have that power, have PCs on our desktop, and control that environment. Where have we gone back to now? Everyone's going to host everything in the cloud. It's back into that kind of mainframe area. But what's actually driving uh, a lot of the communications and the actual strategies? is the fact that we've got to have regulatory compliance, PCI type of compliance, credit card transactions. It's about having that secure environment for you to work in. And obviously moving forward, you know, we've got smartphones, we've got um, you know, vehicles having intelligent systems in them as well. I don't know if you guys are aware that a lot of the new cars have got 4G cards in them. 4G cards so that insurance companies can track the way you drive your vehicle. You know, the way you, 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 when you need a service, they'll call you in with a 4G card. All they're investing in is a, is, is a uh, <coughs> 4G card worth about a pound in your vehicle. But they have to actually make you sign a disclaimer. So everything is starting to c come together and um, connected. Where does the future bring us? It's about smart buildings, about smart cities. Being able to offer communications as a service, video as a service. We've seen a lot of the larger buildings, uh, and, and they're talking to us as a, a vendor now as well, to look at how can we automate that process within the environment that they're all working in as well. So sensor and control networks, we're really seeing a big growth in that as well. You know, everything which has got it. So a lot of the uh, catering companies are connecting their fridges to the uh, data network. The whole purpose of that is to be able to monitor you know, when a, someone opens a fridge. If you've ever been to the casinos in Vegas, who's been? Have you all been to the casinos in Vegas? Do you know they're really stingy about pouring you an expensive drink nowadays? The reason for that is they've got these RFID tags. Every time you pick that bottle up, it senses it and it puts it onto the system that that bottle has actually had a drink taken from it. Right? So when you have, you've got Louis, Louis the 13th and you're having that brandy, you know, worth 1,300 pounds or something, and, and you're taking a shot of that which is worth 30 pounds each, they know what you've done. So the whole purpose of that is actually RFID tagging is quite a big, uh, big area, even in hospitals. What's the biggest uh, theft in hospitals? Infusion pumps. No one wants to take the drugs. They're, 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 they're taking an infusion pump home. So the whole purpose of that is tracking those environments as well. And we're actually building in a lot of that capability, video surveillance, facial recognition at airports as well, and obviously uh, advanced tele telemetry. Did you know that when you've been going shopping, that based on your um, smartphone and the wireless that you just have activated, you're not connecting to the network, that a lot of these APs, access points, are picking up the fact that you've been in that environment, in that retail environment. And the way they're picking that up is that they said, right, this MAC address is associating itself every Friday between 12 and 12.30 in our store. Well, let's put an incentive out for that customer. And that's how they're actually trying to promote marketing to actually uh, see what's been connected to the internet. Well, you, you guys don't know you're connecting to it, but you know, it's about Big Brother. So what we're looking at is the first waves in the 60s and 70s. You know, you're know, you looking at IT operational staff issues. You had increased productivity, the rise of the internet. Everyone was saying, internet, we should be able to talk to everyone. The whole purpose of the internet being developed was that. But then all organizations were trying to stop you. And then we had this big wave a few years ago about BYOD, bring your own devices. Right, buy your own dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the BYOD purpose was that obviously it's not that IT departments didn't want you to get on there, it's how you got on securely. And it's offering those services to give you device fingerprinting, uh, a person's fingerprinting in the organization so that that same sign on experience. So these kind of drivers were actually go, m moving us forward in the industry to think how do we make it easier? How do we make a, 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 a secure environment? so that organizations can let people go onto the internet. 
So when you're at home, all your kids, you're, they're on Scopia, they're on like, you know, uh, t Twitter accounts, they're able to use uh, a video conferencing. You come into the organization, they say, no, you can't. There's a security concern. And the time you change is when a senior director comes in and says, I want my iPad on the network. And then you've got to look at your corporate compliance sort of uh, capabilities about that's another attachment of a device there as well. So, you know, cloud enabled, everything is going cloud based, you know, even if you're <coughs> you're buying uh, uh, wireless uh, APs now, you can control them from the cloud. Um, how many of you have got uh, systems at home where you're able to look at your video surveillance at home? Has anybody got CCTV cameras at home and they can actually go and see what's going on at the house? Yeah, you have, excellent. So you can see you know, who's coming in and who's going out. And then it's about sort of uh, uh, energy companies now as well. So if you've got, um, uh, for example, like uh, the panels, solar panels, you can actually see how much energy you're using how much energy you're actually uh, uh, absorbing and actually uh, sort of creating as well. Because obviously, you know, you had this feeding tariff, you can see how much money you're making. So when I look at mine, and I can see the use is about 2.3 kilowatts, the first thing I do is pick up that phone and say, turn those bloody lights off. Because the kids leave all the bloody lights on, you know, and, then they're, <laughs> and they're using their tongs to straighten their hair. And so so that, and that kind of drives the change in, of, about the granularity you can get. And it's not about being big brother, it's about working efficiency, efficiently in your organizations to drive that uh, forward. So, you know, we look at the market, smart cities has a big impact on smart cities, and this is what we're going to. You look at Camden Market, they're using a lot of our technology to actually smart sit, uh, to do smart uh, TV. They're looking at smart, intelligent lighting systems as well, so that, you know, the lighting system comes on at a certain time of the day, or well, you can control the lighting as well. Hull City Football Club, they've actually gone and uh, put all their lighting on LED systems on uh, networking switches, so you can actually control that as the camera comes around, sweeps around, you know, you, the lighting dims so the camera gets a better shot uh, for, for, for the TV as well. So a lot of that is uh, <coughs> being incorporated in as well. We're looking at smart homes, smart energy management, smart transportation, smart security about secure schools, safe schools as well, integrating what's going to be connected into the internet for the school areas as well. So I'm going to speak a bit about smart buildings, healthcare and transport as well. But if you look at in migration of the internet of things as well, if you look at that time curve there, it's like looking at the first phase of RFID tags about, you know, what I said about obviously um, monitoring how many drinks you poured, how many times that bottle was picked up, who you, uh, where you are in a hospital, you know, trying to pick up whether there's a doctor in close proximity. But that evolved further. What, what it was was a lot of uh, organisations were starting to look at, look at the fire services. They're actually getting part-time fire servicemen and what they do is anyone within a five mile radius or vicinity, that they're the ones who get automatically called uh, based on where their RFID location was. You know, we've got uh, Addison Lee, one of the biggest cab firms in London. What they do is they use a lot of the smart technology connecting their device to the internet. They will tell you when you're actually making a booking how far that cab is. If it's within 10 seconds of reaching you, they'll send you an alert. So that's all about utilising those capabilities when you're connecting. You've got video surveillance as well. But what we're looking at today's position is locating people and everyday objects. That's what uh, uh, one of the key drivers as well. And then you're going to look at teleoperations, um, you know, <coughs> telepresence, and looking at distance objects as well, and how to control those. Like I said, in, in vehicles, you're already doing it. You're using 4G to actually control what the vehicle's behaviour is like. So let's have a look at where you do actually associate these Internet of Things and the kind of connectivity that you'd have. A lot of monitoring of railways, control of the track, uh, tracks as well, so that mistakes aren't made. Human error is probably one of the biggest areas where you see accidents occur. So let's, let's eliminate that human error. You know, have that controlled system uh, be able to obviously uh, change the track uh, sequences as well. Air quality and flow, temperature. Video surveillance is probably one of the biggest areas that we're seeing arising. Video surveillance, just not only for safety, but also for obviously uh, compliance. Police uh, uh, services, 999 services, are using a lot of video surveillance, video cameras, pan tilt and zoom cameras to, uh, around the cities to, have, to actually uh, uh, <coughs> make a safer environment for yourselves as well. Water management, highway uh, surveillance as well. So that's in terms of municipalities. How about airports? Airports are actually utilising new cameras to give you facial recognition. When you're walking through, how many of you use the e-passport systems? Because what that e-passport system is actually doing is actually recognising your facial features. That's why when you walk in and you've got your sunglasses on, it won't recognise you, it won't let you through. 
So it's th these kind of services are already being utilized. You know, things are being connected to, to, to actually give you that, you know, the tags which you get on your baggage system. I'll tell you what, baggage, baggages shouldn't be lost. They should be able to track where your bag is anywhere in the world because they have tags on there. Those tags are, ta are tagged and printed and uh, are scanned every single time they leave a building or they actually go on an aeroplane as well. So they're actually utilizing all the luggage monitoring systems as well, looking at explosives and weapons as well, but also PCI compliancy. What's driving PCI compliancy? It's the ability to obviously have credit card transactions safely and, and safeguarding your uh, um, uh, details while it's doing that, right? So you look at a lot of airports now, what they're doing is it's about like, you know, looking at identity of uh, single sign-on identity. Airport staff can go and sit on any single desk now. Based on the single sign-on, they'll say, right, this person belongs to Virgin as a carrier, and they'll actually bring the Virgin screen behind them, and you can go and check in there. And they'll only use that particular multi-tenanted environment to securely uh, do all their credit card transactions as well. So it's, it's, it's at work now, you know, credit card transactions are still very, very sensitive. You know, people are wary about using them, but there's a, the security built around them. And what's actually driving that change is the government, PCI compliancy, right, uh, to give you that uh, capability as well. Smarter cities, right, buildings, look at the smart buildings. People walking in, they swipe their pass through, recognizes who's coming to the building. What it'll do is it'll only allow that pass to go to the only, uh, only to that floor that are allowed to. Now, I went into a building yesterday, and they said, right, what floor do you want to go to? And I said, floor number three. And it says, yeah, use elevator number three. It's about you know, managing that environment sensibly to so, say they don't want me to stop at every single floor uh, you know, before getting right to the top. So a lot of this intelligence, and, and that's built in, and that's what Internet of Things is about. The connectivity to the Internet, uh, the connectivity to your local area networks to give you that capability as well. You know, smart smithies, smart, uh, smart uh, uh, you know, people using their devices. How many people have got more than one device? We all have. We've got about three or four devices, haven't we? We all want them connected to the internet. So what we're looking at is, is a big growth. You know, if your organizations require, uh, obviously, uh, assistance in obviously building that growth, we know that the networking behind it needs to facilitate that growth area as well. Okay, look at medical healthcare. You know, we're looking at patient monitoring, like remote monitoring as well. So it's not just about being in hospitals. It's about monitoring that individual at home over a video surveillance link to see if they're okay. It's taken away that factor of having a physical person there and being able to monitor that environment. Now, more and more um, areas that we're seeing taking this on board are uh, things like nurseries and, and after school clubs. Because parents say, we don't care if other parents can see our children. We want to be able to see our own children as well in a safe environment. Because as soon as you go, you know that the, uh, the, all, all the uh, staff are going to eat McDonald's in front of the kids and say, right, you better have your greens instead. But, you know, so it's about building that environment of, of safety for yourself, for your children. Now, the other thing about safer schools is, uh, uh, I'll come on to the uh, uh, hospital environment in a minute, is about people walking around the school, uh, outside the school campus. So what Wi-Fi is doing is it's capturing someone's MAC address. So if people are outside walking around at a certain time, which isn't during, uh, you know, uh, you're uh, dropping the kids off or picking them up, they want to monitor that. Police are actually picking up those stats to see is that a safe environment for the child to be in because we can pick up that person tracking around and that MAC address is associated with a, um, a provider of a phone which is attached to your IME, in, IME I number so they can trace back everything on what you're doing. It is, you know, they've got so much data on us that they're picking up on. But, you know, obviously looking at nurse physician alerts as well, a lot of the um, um, IC, uh, ITU, the, uh, uh, the, the actual ITU departments now, they actually run on wireless networks. Patients are, uh, com, uh, are connected using all the, the telecommunications equipment on a wireless network. So it's got to be robust. It's, it's all connected. It can tell you when someone's heartbeat's going down, it tells you if someone's having a heart attack, you know, it tells you if someone's not breathing right. That's all been picked up by sensors, right? If you're at home, if you don't wake up, right, in an uh, environment where they've got you, uh, um, someone's bedroom, and they, and they don't see that uh, uh, pressure map being uh, released so that people aren't waking up, they can send someone around. 
So with all these environments, we're looking at it, entry, entry exit systems as well. But as I said, PCI compliance is one of the main things which is uh, driving these changes as well. I spoke about LED lighting. So, you know, a lot of football clubs, a lot of obviously hire agencies as well, they're actually looking at connecting intelligent lighting systems. Now, I don't know if you know about net data networking, but a networking switch can give you 30 watts a port at the moment. It's going to drive to 60. That 30 watts per port can drive six bulbs, five watt bulbs, LED bulbs. And that's what's actually driving the change, where you're actually connecting those up in an environment where you can actually control the lighting system for your house and uh, you know, even a building. So Dubai World Trade Centers, right? They actually have all their lighting system connected to a data network. It's all internet connected. So obviously moving forward, that's where they're looking at. <coughs> moving to. So the summary of it is, you know, everything which can be connected will be connected. That's what's what we're moving forward with. We know for a fact that all your devices at your home, your consumer devices, they're all connected to the internet, such as your AV devices as well, your audio devices. As you move forward, it'll be your uh, uh, fridge freezers, it'll be your washing machines, because when you're going to be out there, you can look at that and say, yeah, it's a nice sunny day. I'll, sw I'll switch on the washing machine so I can, as soon as I go home, it'll be ready as long as everything's uh, um, sort of uh, already uh, uh, piled in there. So what we're looking at is, is that from, we're scaling in, we're going to scale out. There's a big growth market for connectivity, uh, especially um, in, in terms of obviously looking at uh, home devices, white goods as well. But also, one thing that we could be very careful of is a secure environment that we can send those across the uh, network in. Right? So OK, picking up uh, all this information, if you can't securely get an image across uh, which other people can't hack into, there's no point in it being there. That is a real, real big challenge as well. And you know, obviously there, there are standards out there. I, I didn't want to talk about my organization as such. I was talking about more of the Internet of Things. But you can actually provide a pure stealth environment which gives you full PCI compliance and security in uh, delivering all your services uh, for the Internet of Things.